to have that show and yeah everyone it's on now yeah do you want me to wait and turn it on well I, that's up to you what you want to know all right well okay well, i'll finish telling you telling you about armandorf because it gets funny he's now dead and his wife is sue Earp remarried someone named Van de Bovenkamp. So it gets worse. Her name is Sue Earp Van de Bovenkamp. She oh uses all the names. <laughs> so, and that's where the Casco Mountain... Quilters Guild, yeah. Quilters Guild mm -hmm. meet. Um, Nancy Smith, I guess, was the past yes, president of... she was my sponsor up there. Uh-huh. That Sunday. Uh-huh. They're very prolific. My goodness, they must be. It's very nice. Uh-huh. So what we did was, um, you know, for the Quilters Hall of Fame, the ladies have a small exhibit that they travel around. Yes. And I guess they were dissatisfied with it, and they mentioned it to Witty Sanford, who is our executive director, and she applied last year um, to the New York State Council on the Arts for a, a booklet, a publication on the Quilters Hall of Fame and we just got funded for it. And I think that she misconstrued what actually the quilters wanted, because they wanted something, uh, a traveling exhibit that was kind of like a poster yes, booklet. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we applied for a booklet, so you're going to be in a, in a book instead of, <laughs> instead of that. I, I was surprised to see the list of names, and uh, that this year they really traveled down the mountain. You know, for me and for Hilda Plever. Are you going to be interviewing her? I did interview her last week. Oh, really? Good. Because uh, I didn't think she could do much publicity. All right. So anyway, um, the only one was Ruth Culver, who's going to, you say, do the interview. She was yeah. the first one, was She was in the first yeah. group in uh -huh. 82. This was the fourth time. Mm -hmm. But I, I thought it was just... They really treated me royally. I, I couldn't get over it. I didn't know what to expect. And the only thing was that it was so far for people here for us to go. Right. And then, uh, oh, um, Teresa, she was the one who wrote the invitations and did such a lot and called me and all. Uh -huh. And she told me to give her a list of so many names to invite. I said, well, it's, but she said, yes, it's in, but we want people to have them. So I gave her a list, but they couldn't come, you know. It was a bad day that day. Yeah. It was a rainy day. Yeah. I was, I was at the induction ceremony. Were you? Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what it was. And then some didn't, uh, well, Kay Gardner didn't take Ann over to the quilt show because she wanted to get down off the mountain, <laughs> frankly. Uh-huh. And then my daughter and son-in-law uh, took us, took Glenn and I, and, and uh, they too, we had our 58th anniversary the Wednesday oh. after that. Uh -huh. So they said, well, Mother, we'll make it a double celebration. We'll take you to dinner somewhere on the way home. Well, when we got on the road home, we only wanted to get home. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to take him. Chinese dinner when we got down home. Uh, and we were so glad to get down. It was very foggy. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So were you surprised when you were nominated or elected? Oh, yes. We came and asked her if she would uh -huh. uh, allow us to nominate her uh, yeah. friend of ours, Marion Thorne. Marion and We had the meeting and we knew that you know, we could nominate someone, and right away Marion and I said, oh, let's nominate Marie. Oh, great. So then we, I called her, and we came over and talked to her, and we looked at quilts, and we've all, we've known Marie all our lives. Uh-huh, uh, -huh. And, uh so, She yeah. said yes, well, we could nominate her. So we were very pleased when she... That's great. Yeah, I, I, we really were, and, but the thing of it that surprised me was, I didn't realize at the time they were here, they were nominating me for the South Mountain Quilters Guild, the new one that just It was oh. for Wiltwick, it's for South Mountain. We've started a new guild in our, in our town. We're oh, a, I see. Now a branch of the Wiltwick, which has got so big that it's... I now, heard Ruth was saying lovely. like 142 yes. quilters. You know, and, yeah. you know, you just it, it's just not personal enough anymore. Yeah, our, I have much enjoy much more going to our South place. Mountain is is limited to twenty active right. or thirty with associates, and we meet every Thursday in the Dutch Reformed Church. Uh huh. And it's very uh -huh. nice. We started at home homes, but it was you know 
that gets too big. Yeah. You can't really handle it. We, we had an all-day quilt thing here last week. Yeah. We made one of these quilt-in-a-day type things, you know, the log cabin. Oh, yeah. And I was uh, supposed to go to that, and I couldn't make and, it. And uh, it was very successful. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. So uh, we do a lot of things like that. Uh -huh. we, well, this uh, keeps you busy, doesn't it? Well, yes, it does. <laughs> I enjoy it though. This is a this is a wonderful job to run around and talk to people who do interesting things. Wow. So, nice. I can't think of anything I'd rather do. Okay. So when did tell, why don't you tell me when you started quilting? Well, like I say, when I was first married, um, we had come from from the city and lived in Lake King in Brooklyn and rather and my folks were always in bakery. Mm -hmm. And we never had time for any kind of thing like that, you know. So anyway, when I was married, my new in-laws, my mother-in-law and three sisters-in-law, and all the friends, we all all did piecing. So first thing you know, I was pregnant with my first baby, and they said, well, we'll have to make baby clothes. Okay. So I learned to piece from them. And those in the 30s like that, why you? Many people piece quilt tops, but never quilted them. They have somebody else who did that and didn't piece, you know, vice uh -huh. versa. Right? And you could have one quilted for all. I never paid more than $12 for a big quilt. You know. They charged you by the spools of thread, didn't That's they? right, like a wow. dollar and a quarter spool. So something. why was it done in that in that? Manner? Well, some people wanted more quilting on them. Church oh. guilds did their church, yeah. like high woods. Oh, high woods yeah, was very nice. They, they did a lot of clothing that way. My grandmother used to work that way. Yes. Uh -huh. And they, they raised money then for their church. That's uh -huh. the way they did. So they and they they still meet every Wednesday oh, yes. and they and they weave rag rugs and, and there are some quilters but not uh, they they, three now. Three that really quilt mm -hmm. and they're old people. Yeah. Well, one my cousin Rosemary. She's not that. It's she one, one of the next, next generation. generation. Next generation. Yeah. yeah. I've been out a couple of times, but they quilt on the big frames. Yes. And I can't. I can't do that either. I can't. Mm -hmm. I do lap quilting. Yeah. Oh, I see. That's what oh, I, I do that. too. Uh huh. So we we started and we made. Oh, I did a little applique with animals and that kind of thing, you know. And then we did that. And uh, my mother-in-law had uh, a quilt double Irish chain that had been started by her mother mm -hmm. and was not finished when she passed away. So those pieces lay there and they looked and we figured out that we could get a crib quilt out of it. So that we did. And that we really quilted because that was so, you know, small. But um, those days too, you put up, you had to put up a frame and it usually was over the dining room table. And it was all, yeah. you know, months and months, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't do that. Or if they had a parlor like they did, they put it in the parlor, then you couldn't work in the winter. See? Right. So that was it. All right, so that's the way I got started. And I made, oh, several quilts that way, piece the top, and had someone else to do. If you were there you, that Sunday, uh, that green and white one, right. that too was, I did that. And, and Mrs. Hoffa, dear friend, quilted. So then it kind of died down, quilting did, for quite a while. You know, who wants quilts that have such beautiful blankets, all right? Uh huh. So uh, we're here again. I well, did some, and we, we had a bakery in Sorgates here, 43 years. And so I would piece like that again and, and have the ladies in high woods, and I had a Mrs. Gasly do one for me, you know, lady old timer. And then the, the Ruth Culver's group, they were, she coordinated a quilt for the Ulster County Bicentennial. That's what revived quilting again, the Bicentennial. Uh -huh. And we, uh, they invited me to make a block, so. We were going out to St. Paul's Lutheran Church in West Camp, and I thought, well, now I'll do that <coughs> because that was one of the oldest churches in the Hudson Valley. In fact, it was farthest one north at that time, <coughs> and that was all I was. Well, between Cotsman and the, and the yes. West Camp. Well, I think West Camp was even I first. So. Yeah. So um, I did a block. And 
then of course they started with the celebrations for the bicentennial and Socrates and that too and well we should some one of the girls said we should have a book for Socrates why not I said yes Socrates is very important too, and this one was going to be down to the college, you know, also community mm -hmm. college. Uh -huh. We should have something for Socrates. And at that time, there was a, a movement to get money to uh, restore this Sawyer grist mill here in Socrates. Mm -hmm. Well, that fizzled out after a while. They got some work done, and the money gave out, and then they started vandalizing. But the quilt that we did did hang there for a while, and it was ideal, you know. Uh -huh. So, um, we started, and then they came here. And before we were finished, there were 75 people involved in making that quilt. Not all stitches, of course, because you have to have pictures. You have to have uh, designs from the pictures. Right. So I can show you pictures of that quilt. Actually, I've seen it. I went. I went and took some photographs of it. it of a which one weeks now? Ago. The one hanging in the library. Oh, I'm talking about it. our story. Oh, this, oh, that. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry. So, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, we, um, and then we'd have people who applied and made the pictures, uh, the uh, blocks. Then we had another group of pictures who came and joined it. Uh -huh. Then we had more people who would quilt it and things like that. And everybody's name who had any part in it is embroidered on the back of that quilt, our quilt. Uh -huh. And so we have, that really started me. We had a couple of month festivals in our town, which we have every year. is very famous all around. What kind of festivals? In fall, month. Chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum. Oh, oh. Yeah, October. Oh, I didn't so, realize that. Oh, that's a nice affair. The garden club that I belong to sort of sponsors it. We plant mums in all the, the boxes, all the street boxes and everything. And the oh. park is full of mums, thousands of them up there. And Seaman Park, oh, they that's have nice. the activities. Did, did you, where, how did you come down from? You didn't pass from Catskill down, did you? Mm, I, no, I didn't go that far. I came up through Woodstock, oh, 212 right, and the down there. Well, if you have the time, you should ride out there Seaman Park because there's still mums there. Yeah, there's aren't mums there, but the frost yeah. has gotten yeah. some of them. Mm -hmm. But we have thousands of people come oh, on that yeah, well, weekend. Oh. They have a princess and queen yeah. and, uh -huh. and football game the pre first week and oh, uh -huh. real music nice. up there and music. Yeah, it's, really nice. yeah. it's really nice. It made the city papers a couple oh, of times. Sure. Sure. And now it's in travel things too. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they had art and crafts, you know, displayed. So uh -huh. they, I had pictures of that too. I showed quilts well, our, and that a couple of times. South Mountain quilted on the South Mountain. This w this yeah. year. Yeah, this year up there as an exhibit. You can't Maybe. sell anything up there. It's oh, just a show. You can't sell. And mm -hmm. art. Oh my God! You see all the pictures and mm -hmm. things, sculpture and, and leather work, right? Right. Oh, a little I bit. I did a little of everything, and they had weavers, which I do too. I weave. Oh, do you? Yeah. Weaves beautifully. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So that, that way. So that anyway, um, at this one old timers day in that festival that year. They had the crafts and such things on the streets and sorties and parades and gifts to sell and that kind of thing. And we all wore, remember the long dresses we made and wore? It was a kerchief and, a, you know, the real, real old time of thing. Uh -huh. And so that's the way. And they say, well, you should weave. And they wanted me to take a loom out on the street. I said, no way. You know, it, I couldn't do it. I had to take it apart, take it down. I said, but our store was empty then because we had closed our store. We couldn't sell it, so we closed it. Uh -huh. So I set up the loom there, and that's where I wove. Well, that store annoyed me so being empty, and you know, it had to, oh, I just felt terrible about it. And so we put all weave, uh, examples of weaving in the showcases. Oh. And I said, it still don't look right. So I hung some quilts on the back wall cases. Well, I had more interest in the quilts Very attractive. than I did on my weaving, you know. Yeah. So, okay. People just look and go on. So, my husband said to me once, well, you're telling everybody about quilting and that. Why don't you teach it? You know, 
you're looking for something to do anyway. I miss people so much. Uh -huh. When we closed the store, we uh -huh. upstairs over an empty store for a year. You know, before yeah. we came here, it was bad. And uh, <laughs> so I started, and I had taught for about four years or so, half, half a dozen or so women in. Uh -huh. So that was the way I did. But I taught to, you know, lap quilting, some call it apartment quilting. You quilt one block at a time. and. Mm -hmm. Join them afterwards, and that way you can take them wherever you go. Right. There's a, a, a pillow on the <coughs> side. Well, that you can do, pill the top, that brown and white. You can I do that. Body. Yeah. I carry all my blocks all over. All the time. Uh -huh. So then we can join them. I have a whole quilt that I have to join now. Yeah. I can do it. When you so can do all, it. All the blocks are uh -huh. done. So that's all hand done, and it's not finished yet. <coughs> So then when you go to join them, you use the sewing machine to join them. Oh. But you still work it out <coughs> that me. you don't see machine sewing on the front. Well, you don't I use see. the machine for the back. Hmm? You don't use the machine for the no, back. No, no. You have to hand, hand hem it. Hand join it in the back. Uh -huh. It should never be a machine, says, as far as that. So today, the machine quilting is getting popular. Uh -huh. And that's because of the time, you know. Right. You young people don't have that much time. <laughs> So, right? We don't have that much talent. <laughs> well, yeah, but you can acquire it. Yes, you can acquire yeah. that. They'll yeah. say that about weaving, but weaving takes a whole lot more study. Yeah. yeah it's just. So yeah. you you both quilted and we weaved yeah. all your life. I mean, just well since I married. Oh, it? since you married. Well, the quilt, the weaving I've done about thirty five, forty years. Uh huh. After you talk, we'll show you. Okay. All right. Okay. I have to. So what else do you want to know? Well, okay. What? Why do you like quilting better than weaving? I'll just pick up on. What well, at this about. point, was the reason because I've just become more and more involved with the quilting, mm -hmm. and I would have. Uh, I only sold one crib quilt in the time because it's not. Lucrative enough. You don't never get enough for all the work you put in a real quilt. Uh -huh. But I had five grandchildren. But you donated though for the for the raffle. Oh you know, yeah. The bear's claw. Yeah. Well, you made and and, and, and we made that when in fact that was my first joint uh, with my students. We made each made a block, and then we joined and then we gave it to what of course was that I think well it was the grist mill the grist mill that's right to raise funds to to restore the grist mill and oh. we did pretty well you know <coughs> and it was a, a project that was everyone could take part in. Did, didn't they do it two years mm -hmm. yeah we tried the second year so. and we did all right too mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you know those things even in the village they in the down poor thing you feel sorry for the, these folks who try to promote it yeah. So that, in that way, that was uh, helpful to that uh -huh. cause, because we wanted a place to hang that quilt. I it's see. been vandalized terribly. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. It's just on the outskirts, and there's no one right around there. Yeah. <coughs> they even working. had the uh, workings that they could operate it at that one time. Mm -hmm. Now it just lays. It's a shame. So anyway, that was uh, that was that. So. And I would weave. Um, I had a, a 36 inch loom built. Oh, I had such wonderful wood teachers out in Woodstock. Mm -hmm. Of course, now Berta Fry, she's <coughs> your generation, never even heard of her. And Alberta well, Fry, who is she? Alberta Fry, she's dead now. But she was a master weaver in, in Woodstock. She was really oh, oh, yes. <coughs> And then along the class, and she's gone to California, retired. But they, uh, a real professional weaver does uh, a lot for with the textiles in that. Whatever day. happened to all those samples of Ernest? <coughs> They're in the museum up at, um, on Alex, and what is the river? Around the Thousand Islands. St. Lawrence? Somewhere. Yeah, somewhere up there. And she gave, uh, of course, some of her things donated to her home church in Texas. And uh, 
also all of the notes and books and that went to the Woodstock Guild. Uh, they Nancy still had have some of them too, didn't she? Nancy Carlisle, yeah. of course, inherited yeah. <laughs> and quite a few things. And I don't blame her for it either because she was very good to me. Sure. She had the, there were two maiden, maiden ladies, artists and in the 80s, they were well over 80. <laughs> and no, but no relatives, you know. So uh -huh. this uh -huh. young couple, they, they did things for them. So she inherited that. Mm -hmm. So you don't sell any of your of your work. I, when I first was out of the store, I used to make pillows and bags and things of that kind. And I mm -hmm. had an outlet somewhere in Jersey through my son. Uh huh. And I I sold quite a bit that way, but never a quilt. Yeah. You wouldn't get if you figured you wouldn't get you wouldn't get ten cents an hour. Right, right. And that's why if you go to a craft show and you see fifteen twenty dollars on a pillow, you say, "Oh my gosh, you know, I'm not going to buy that." But that isn't enough even. Yeah. So do you have most of your quilts then that you've made? Yes, I gave each one of the well the grand <coughs> granddaughters that they got uh, nodded. Quilt to, to take to college, uh -huh. and a real quilt when they got married, and uh, my son and my daughter lived. My son, two sons, they they got a big hanging in this last year. Uh huh. That's the thing now. To hang them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one was sixty inches. And what I'm planning for myself is a 40, uh -huh. things like that, and, and Amy when she got married. She's very good math mathematically, the way she figures things out. She yeah. really is clever. <laughs> yes, she How's is. My colorings, I, I don't know what there is about it, but I'll play around with fabrics till I see what I like, and then I'll put it together. Oh, so you just kind of move oh, them yeah. around? Yeah, bye. <laughs> sort of live with them. At least yeah. I lay my fabrics out and walk by it a dozen times a day. Yeah. And I think well, why don't you turn that off if it's going, and we'll show you something, then you can decide yourself what you want to write about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean, because yes. this is... Uh, what do I want to ask? So, I think I already asked this, but I want to ask it differently. Is there something about doing these things that's satisfying, or what is it about doing these things? I get satisfying? great satisfaction from it. It's a, a therapy for me, if you know what I mean. Uh -huh. This uh, of going in the garden and raising the herbs, that's the best for both of us, because we are older, and now the days are especially precious to us, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. just again. So anyway, uh, these things, when you go and work in the garden, when you go sit down and figure out a quilt or a pattern, you don't think wrong things. You just think happy, you know, and how you're going to do it. And I feel that uh, in quilting and meeting with a guild like that, the Lord gave me this talent and I want to pass it on. Mm -hmm. You know, why button it all up and be stingy with your thoughts about something like that? Anybody wants to know anything, I don't mind, and I'll show them and invite them, like here. I think this is great. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. to think that someone wants to know and uh, more about these beautiful arts because, oh, it's so nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When, you, when you do something like that, you think, but you know, that's pretty good. And why should you just have it? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So that's the way I feel about quilting and gardening. So do you do a little bit of each of these things every day, or how do you? Well, uh, when it's garden time, that's the most. Yeah. You know, you cannot do it. You have to harvest when they're ready and, and freeze the things and dry the things and, uh -huh. and gather all of those things. And now, they should all be tended to now. Ooh, things are piling up. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, Mr. Gantner, too, we get great, you know, joy out of the garden. He's getting kind of lost as far as the garden is done. 
and, um, and woodworking and that. It, this, it's colder downstairs, you know, to do. Yeah. That. He has all his tools and nice, and, and, he, and he does and will. But of course, n neither one of us can do what we used to do. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> but uh, that's our that's our pleasure. So yeah. when you had the bakery, you didn't do as much. No, or? no, we couldn't. Mm -hmm. That took up. That was why we really had to get out because uh, had to stop. It was just you know he was working. 12, 14, 16 hours Ooh. and Sundays and, mm. you know, because there too, when he was 65, he couldn't do like he did when he was 55 and, mm -hmm. and everything took longer and so mm -hmm. it was getting bad and then he, he just didn't, for 43 years, it was a long time in the bakery too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. same place, mm -hmm. we saw many changes, but we were always busy with her and we, no, but you now you were originally from Brooklyn. Yeah, I was born in Brooklyn, and my mother and father we had bakeries always. Okay. And that was one thing when we really closed the bakery, we thought we could sell it, mm -hmm. but nobody was buying businesses. You know, they right. were they can earn a whole lot more money and have much better benefits when they work for a big company. Right. So uh, I don't blame them one bit mm -hmm. because. Mm -hmm. We always did all right, you know, boys with the college and things that kind. Barbara didn't want to go to college, uh -huh. so uh, we were, but we did all right and we lived well, mm -hmm. had a nice home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, that was one thing about it. I uh, said when we were married, my father wanted to sell us the business and was my husband was uh, working the gas company then quite fair. And he always tells the tale, and my father said to him, if you're going to hang around here, you have to uh, be a baker. <laughs> so he came in the bakery and taught him the bakery. Uh-huh. And we were married, and so we bought it from him then. Uh-huh. So we had a bakery. And like I said, I always lived over a bakery, and I said, I'm going to someday have a house. Uh -huh. I'm gonna walk outside and have my own right. meal. Because this is a big house now for two of us, because we had Barbara with us until last year. Uh huh. So, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful house, though. So it is lovely, so isn't nice. it? I hope we don't have to give away. That's what my daughter's hobby miniatures. Oh. She makes them or collects them? Oh, she made them and collected them both. <laughs> We all believe this We all had part of that, because now she don't have time or the room for this, so we should have the girls to enjoy. And so she has a house there in the park. Oh, my oh, oh, one my house. Miniatures are my favorite thing, too. I love them. Well, see this dining room? This mm -hmm. is the dining room furniture that she had in her playhouse. The dollhouse was bought to go to the playhouse. Uh -huh. And so we decorated this dining room, like with the dining room that was up in Fishing Street. Oh, great. It had red. The last time we papered with the red, you know, that sort of velvety. Uh huh, thing. right. And the Wayne's party, Mr. Gentleman, did all of that oh, by God. himself. Uh -huh. All right. So now this, she bought that. that This is the cemetery. Uh huh. All right. The home of the stove was for that. Uh huh. She built her own uh, posters. Uh -huh. And this, you know, it was a cemetery. What's that? Uh, no, the kids are all popular. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, maybe I did that hanging and reading points. Oh, my goodness. I'm just the whole body there because it was one way up. Oh, anyway. She did that beautiful one. Not that the petty one. I had the tiny, tiny one. Uh -huh. All right. I, I made that little chair. She did the same. A friend of hers that did artwork did that in my suite. That was one of them. Her dating name was Barbara. 
really full. Married this year, and she's working, and he's working uh, and in a small apartment, you know. Uh -huh. So she's got, and she always, always wanted to grow up and then she was bakery. That's wonderful. Yeah. He's going to have a whole bakery. He's going to have something in here at some time, but that's time for now. So, do you think drying? I'm drying them, and they oh. just, they happen to be from Hawaii with this head. How do you dry them? And they're, they're treated, really, because that's glycerin and water, and they stay stiff as well. See that? That's different than dry. The, um, the drawings and that? Yeah. Oh, just by reading. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 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 Yeah, nothing. Is so how did you how did you feel about being um, elected? <laughs> I fell on top of the world, if you know what, at the cloud nine. And yeah. that expression and I really haven't come down yet. Uh huh. Because uh, all the time, well, we've had beautiful parties. We had 50th anniversary. We had retirement party and all those things, and they've been for us, you know. And for uh, my family was all, but this was just for me. Yeah. You know, it, it just was, the, and they were so hospitable up there. They just, uh -huh. I don't know that. Teresa is a, is a wonderful person, uh -huh. you know? Uh -huh. And each one, and my sponsor, Nancy, yeah, Nancy Smith, right? Uh -huh. What do you mean sponsor? Well, now uh, Ruth and Mill and uh, Marion Thornton, they sponsored me, or you know, for this nomination. And when I got up there, she said, well, I'll be your sponsor while you're here. I said, what do you mean? Well, you know, they, she took my things and she showed them and she uh, presented me with the presents <coughs> and, and things like that. Oh, okay. okay. And then she took, made sure that I, we, we as a family knew where to go to the quilt show. That was, <coughs> that was another museum, huh? Yeah. The Delaware County Historical Association at the Frisbee House, yeah. Is that the uh, uh, house <coughs> or that there for other things besides shows, you know, quilt shows? They do, they do a lot of different things. I'm not sure. I know that they have quilt shows. They have all different kinds of exhibits. Yes. Um, they have demonstrations there sometimes yes. and, and fairs out on the lawn. Mm -hmm. so, well, the two... We went to this uh, this past Saturday. We went. The Wilson Quilters had a, a lecture, and it was the all-day meeting, or you right. know, into the afternoon. And uh, she gave a talk and lecture on uh, the vagabond. She she must be a judge and goes all around. And so she told her experiences. Then we have a uh, take a sandwich, and they have things in, in the afternoon that quilt. Uh, show and tell and <coughs> when the, the girls from the history took all the quilts they did in a day. Well, of course, they didn't do it in a day, you know. Yeah. But uh, you could do the top on the machine if you had it all ready. And then, so most of them were going to not theirs, which doesn't take as long as quilting. Uh -huh. And uh, so, but it started to snow. And what a time we had getting home. And there were two ladies from up the mountain, 
and uh, and I wanted them to stop by and have a cup of coffee and give them the fabric and the plan for what I was asking them to do. And we got here and it's all right. And my husband says, you better call and find out what it is up the mountain. And when uh, Becky called the chief secretary, I guess, of the one group, she called and said, well, it's raining, but it's freezing. Well, we've got plenty of beds, so we uh -huh. stayed the night with me, and uh -huh. we had the best visit. We learned all about, uh, oh, uh, their dairy farms, all right? Uh -huh. Well, if that wasn't something, and one's daughter is going to graduate, and she has so many lambs and sheep. Oh, uh -huh. they themselves have 60 cows and 20 My heifers goodness. and 20 this, and and uh, the daughter who's going to go to the college next year, she has the sheep, 60 sheep she owns. <laughs> really? And so we had a very interesting evening in that. And it's, oh, they, were, they were really afraid to go home, but didn't know what to do. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I was delighted because we had a good time. Uh -huh. you know. It sounds good. Yeah. So yeah, I gave them the plans and they, they had a good time looking at all my books and things like that. Mm -hmm. So we had a very nice time. Oh my heavens! I was so scared, and Mr. Denton was very upset because he said, well, "You know, what in the world she, can you uh, see him and just talking quilts all that time? You didn't see there was snow, and then come on home." <laughs> and, well, it it uh, didn't start down there until around one. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and it kept coming up. It know. did get really bad. It I know. was bad. And I felt sorry for Becky because she felt responsible, you know, about. Do you have a Do you have a favorite quilt pattern? Favorite quilt pattern. Is there one that you think you do more often than others, or? Well, I her? think I'm going to always like to do this uh, star and piecing the the uh, stars and working from there, the medallion type. Of Whatever I do, I, I seem to go back to that. Now well, I did that one up just for a present, but that, that uh, piecing and joining those pieces in colors in the dark, contemporary colors, that's what I think I like the best. Uh -huh. it's, it's a challenge to make it come right. Yeah. Uh -huh. And one thing I do when I quilt anymore, I'll go along quilting and then I see three that doesn't look right, I take it out right away. And that's what I always used to teach the girls to do. Correct the mistake right away, you, you never go back to it, and it'll always haunt you there. You know, you look right. at that and you see that. So uh -huh. if I'm quilting in, in the morning, I quilt the best in the morning, and I One take it, I'm more alert in that, and the light is better. Yeah. I'll piece in the night, that's what I do, this is my work done. Uh -huh. And sit here, and you can watch TV, and you can talk to your hubby. And, uh -huh. But uh, I piece in the night and quilt in the morning. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And if I would do three or four stitches and they don't look right, I take right away. Uh -huh. I'm thread, do it right. Uh -huh. So you're a perfectionist. Well, that's what quilting is about. Yeah. And that's what they're trying to teach the young ones to do. Be a perfectionist. It won't bother. What's the sense of looking at something quilted? You might. Say, okay, we can do, say the children's quilt, you're going to wash them. All right, you can get by. And that's why some have learned to uh, piece on the machine, and, and it's possible. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's more work because you still have to stop and start with the points. Right. And uh -huh. you don't go over seams very much because then you, then you can't quilt, then you got too much. Uh -huh. Do each step right or don't bother. Uh -huh. All right? That's great. Do you, uh, is there any part of the whole process that you like more than other parts? Yes, the design of it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and the really cutting and the planning. Uh-huh. And that's where your mathematical skills come in? I suppose. Yeah. I always did like math, even though I didn't get, get anywhere. Uh -huh. But I, uh, that I did and figure it out, you know, like when you come to the next border, you got to have say 16 patches to fit in that spot, and so it must be right. Uh-huh. 
so is this the first time you've been you've gotten all this recognition for all of your talent? Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, everybody that I've given to, of course, my family, you know, they love them and they, you know, the, the girls just float. And when uh, Amy at the wedding, you know, that was in Jersey and those people that just thought it was just the greatest thing ever since that family was just. Uh -huh. This time she had more uh, summer when they made the hanging because she just, and she and her hubby both just graduated. And, as lawyers and you know, mm -hmm. more. so they had a lot of lawyer friends. Uh huh. In fact, one of the one of the group when they took their bar, you heard about that the whole group that lost out because there was the, the, they didn't find tests. No. Oh. So the only reason that Amy oh. and John were not in that group because they the, the people who resided in New York in Manhattan. Yeah. They took their test in Manhattan. Uh huh. All right. And now Amy and John, they really reside in Jersey, so they and but they had to take the New York test in Albany. So okay, they were up there and took theirs and all right. But the people in the, the, the second half of the of the test, which was a simple yes or no that type of thing, you know, math, math uh, multiple multiple choice. choice. I had to take it over a, a month after. Oh my goodness! And to take the test for law is it for the, it's the hardest thing in the oh world. My yeah. Gosh. That's seven years. Yeah. Right. right. Plus an extra. Uh huh. So they just they just had their test. They were married, and now they both got jobs. Thank goodness. Yeah. Uh huh. But they got a long ways to go, you know, to get there. But all of those people she had all, hmm, between the two of them, they had many people at their wedding mm -hmm. that way. And <laughs> so there the one, the one girl really, oh, she, I mean, she was so scared because that, you know, they worked weeks and weeks and nights and days to get to the when they were going to take that. Yes, yeah, that's, uh, what a, that's a nightmare. Yeah. My goodness. Oh. <laughs> so anyway. Okay. Well, I guess I've taken enough of your time for today. Well, that's <laughs> I would like to come back to and, and and talk to you about your, about everything. I mean, I'm just amazed at everything that you do. All oh, right, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Also, talk to your husband about his woodworking. Mm -hmm. Okay, that'd be fun. Like that too. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Is there anything else you would add today? I must be talked out. <laughs> mm. No, I'm getting dry. <laughs> this is great. You go someplace else today? I'm going to go and see some people who make miniatures, in fact. It's not for the, the Gertrude and Tom Wolfberg. They live in Kingston. And they make doll houses and oh, little good. miniatures. So I'm going to go and see them. There is a, a shop out on about 28th. With all of the uh, the dollhouse there. Oh, I haven't been there. I should go. I didn't even think I was going there. That's quite a place. Uh huh. Bobby well, used to love to go there. You know, she come on. She still has kids now. But uh, she went from one thing to craft and another too because she when she wants to sing, she wants to cry. I know. I it, it, you always feel weird about. I'm, I'll never get used to hearing my voice on tape for too long. Like when we went to the fair and listened to the telephones and that, and that was long ago. You know, that never sounded like it. When it was World Fair, a telephone company had to be uh, displayed. Oh, and yeah. You went yes. in and listened and that sounded like uh -huh. it. Yeah, I better, I better. Before you do anything more. I don't think it's anything bad. I just don't think. Well, that must be enough. Yeah.